Many see the military as a group of patriotic individuals who are serving their country to protect the freedoms and liberties in the United States. Do those exist? I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Not for us. I mean, for clarification purposes, you know, you did serve. um, Just so people don't think you're just being a dick. Yeah, I was in the military, so stop. (laughs) Stop getting triggered, okay? So, while almost anyone is able to enlist in the military, there were roughly 1.3 million active duty service members in 2022. And although most service members are good individuals, there are always outliers in every organization that are far from good and commit unthinkable crimes. Andre McDonald, a major in the United States Air Force, did the unthinkable just one day into March of 2019. And on that day in March, Andre McDonald killed his wife, Andreen McDonald, in front of their child with special needs by bludgeoning and with fire. This case is eye-opening and shocking to say the least. But what drove McDonald to commit a crime so permanent against a person he loved? Like petals on roses Let blood drip from me This ghost of the road Let death walk with me Hey everyone, it's me, Battle, and I still don't wash my pants. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I'm super happy to be back, by the way. I had to take a little break because life was crazy. Welcome back, Dad. Life do be getting crazy, though. We are Bruh is a Murder, and we cover Ooh. true crime cases of color and play music from artists you've probably never heard of before. Today, Kelly, Andre, Robert, and I are looking at the case of Andre McDonald. A prior hey, that's my name. Who, who turned murderer? <laughs> yes, that is Andre. Congratulations. No relation. No relation. Andre M murdered his wife. Interesting. <laughs> but before we start, remember that we are pretty active on our social media. So make sure you subscribe so you are able to stay up to date on our latest episodes and extra content. The link will be provided in the show notes by Andre. So without further ado. Kelly, can you please start the episode? No, I cannot. <laughs> well, first off, welcome back to another season. Season Woo! like party. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we're back, hoes, like back rows. Kelly, take it away. <laughs> Andrine and Andre McDonald met in the late 2000s in Florida, though both had immigrated from Port Antonio, Jamaica. They were married on July 9th, 2009, when she was 19 and he was 29. Quite the age difference. Oh, and it was also his second marriage. He had gotten divorced previously, also in Florida. Shortly after getting married, the couple moved to San Antonio, Texas, where Andrine went on to graduate with a degree in finance. They began a business together called Starlight Home Assisted Living. This was not Andre's first marriage, and after a decade in the birth of their special needs child, relations between the couple grew tense. They were fighting off which one of their employees attested to. There were multiple police reports of domestic disputes at their household. Andrine at one point even told friends that if she went missing, it was likely due to her husband. Andrine's father knew his daughter's relationship had become abusive, but encouraged her to try and resolve the problem between her and her husband. We love those old, old world values. Yeah. Like, no, think- just you can just leave. Oh, Wait. he hits you? You can fix it. Um, By leaving. I think that's a lot of red flags if you have a friend saying, hey, if I go missing, it's my husband. Unless she was saying it in a way that was joking, but... I think I mean, even if you're saying it, like, jokingly, it's like, hey, you okay? <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> Are you good? Well, and it should also be noted that Andre's father's wife was murdered shortly before Andre and Andrine were married. Florida man. No, it wasn't in Florida. It was in Jamaica. Oh. Okay. Do, we yeah, know, do we know the conditions? Like, was that... Did his father also murder his wife? We do. Oh. I figured maybe we could, like... Check that in. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We got some murder runs in the family. So, now... Andre, no relation, did try to make up a story that his wife attacked him. Which... I think everybody with the same first name is related. <laughs> is that how that works? Yeah. So I am Andre 3000. The ultimate I hope my hairline Andre. Everything, everywhere, all at once. In my ass. <laughs> you know, Andre did try to make up a story that his wife attacked him, which I think we all can agree was probably bullshit and didn't happen. At least I think so. So now... He claimed that he accidentally killed her and then chose to dismember her and get rid of her corpse because, you know, accidents happen, I guess. Mm -hmm. The details leading up to the murder are unclear because most of it just comes from his account. But here's what we know. So Adrian McDonald's murder was preceded by a troubled and abusive relationship with her husband, Andre. The couple's relationship had been deteriorating for some time, and her efforts to leave the relationship were met with violence and threats. So on one night, on the night of the murder, Andre and Adrian fought over their divorce, along with the accusations of her cheating with an ex. And uh, there was no actual evidence of cheating. I think it was like what, like text messages, right? He was well, yeah, because all her phone. It was supposedly her ex-boyfriend from Jamaica. So, like, it's not like they were, like, Even in, in the, the same, same place. Not I mean, in the same can, country. Not that you can't emotionally And I did find cheat. an article that said she got a tattoo. She also, allegedly, I don't know if we actually have any confirmation, that she got a tattoo that was associated with her ex somehow. Ooh. I believe it was, like, a date. Um, but I don't know. One, if it's true, we don't have evidence to support this yeah. for, you know, dark reasons. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah, so a physical altercation ensued after the accusation. Yeah, he said that she spat in his face, then he headbutted her, and because of the headbutt, she ran to the bathroom to check her face. He followed her, and this is where the attack continued. Now, he testified that he threw her to the ground, kicked her twice, but said that he could not recall where on the body he kicked her. Because of the noise, their seven-year-old daughter woke up to see what was happening and saw her mom on the ground wheezing. Andre said that he took her back upstairs and put her to bed. And this was when he he dragged his wife out to a field and bludgeoned her to death with a hand claw hammer. The medical examiner determined that the cause of death was blunt force trauma to the head, and the manner of death was a homicide. In court, he said, I remember the claw of the hammer got stuck in her neck, and I was like ripping the hammer out. Yes, very. But he can, he can remember that, but can't remember things like where he kicked her on about it. Doesn't make any sense. After murdering his wife, he stuffed her in a plastic bag, poured gasoline over her corpse, and lit it on fire. Totally things a person who is doing something in self-defense would do. Yeah, or in the heat of the moment would do. You know, we all just have human-sized plastic bags and gasoline just sitting around. So now McDonald told the court that he, he felt like a victim and blamed his wife for destroying their lives. He said... And all of this, in my opinion, like, could have been avoided. Like, if Andrine wanted to go with someone else, she was free to do that. She had a degree. She owned half of a business. Like, why would she need to go through all this stuff and try to get it all? And, in my opinion, at that point, I'm thinking, that's what the whole thing about going to Jamaica was. Trying to get back to this dude, her ex-boyfriend. To, like, put me off so she could get everything. It was like, bitch, not everything's about you. She, if she could have left, she would have left. But you were not allowing her to leave. Also, what's crazy is that I don't understand why people who try to burn bodies think that Say they're that going they're to get rid of evidence when it takes over 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit or like 1,100 degrees Celsius to actually get rid, rid of like bone. Yeah. You can't it just burn hours. bone with like a fire in the backyard. It's going to take a very long time for that to happen. So, well, that's also not to mention like the, the smell problem. of like flesh is very distinct. 
Dahmer ran into the same problem of the bodies he'd burned, like, when he was younger. He had to, like, pulverize the bones afterwards, so, like, burn all of the body and then crush the bones and spread the fragments. I don't think the, like, giant from those, like, old nursery rhymes or whatever. Grind your bones to make my bread. (sighs) Whenever we, like, do this stuff, I'm just, like, triggered by everything. I just want to, like, scream, like... That's not how this fucking works! Oh no, you can tell how like, entitled he is. Just by the, by the quotes I selected. He's a piece of shit. Yeah, like, oh, I was the victim. So she ended up dead. Were you? You know, if she could walk away, so could you, motherfucker. Like, you followed her. She went to the bathroom and you came after her. So that's on you, like- home dog. Obviously, self-defense laws change state to state, so like, and also, I'm, we're not lawyers or whatever. That's also Texas. You never tried to leave. Like, yeah. the physical location, you never tried to leave the house because your life was in danger. Well, again, and he went after her. Right. She left the room and he followed her. That's not fucking self-defense. Sorry. Okay, I'm trying it. <laughs> so, uh, Andrine was reported missing on March 1st after she began began missing uh, work and personal obligations in her life. So it was about a day. Um, But because, you know, the people in her life knew where she was supposed to be, they immediately called. Um, And I just want to highlight that because there's also that myth of like, you have to wait 48 hours or whatever, person's missing. No, that's not true. If someone is suspiciously missing, call the cops immediately and don't let them tell you do not let them tell you that you have to wait because that's fucking bullshit and by the time 48 hours passes you've missed the window that you could actually get somebody back that first 48 march 1st after she began missing work and personal obligations she was in uh andre was initially arrested on march 3rd after finding several items in his car by the police they believed him to be connected to the disappearance because of the items found in his car, which included gas cans, um, plastic bags, things like that, they did get a warrant to search his property and they located bloody clothes and the murder weapon. It would be several more months before the remains were actually ro- located and they were hidden amongst animal bones on private property. Andre was indicted for murder in o- October of 2019. So. As far as murders or death cases go, this one moved very quickly because the crime took place on the, what, 29th of February? She was reported missing on March 1st. They arrested him March 3rd, and then he was indicted in October. Like, that's lightning fast. Yeah. Because the evidence was so good. Like, they found items associated with a crime in his car when he was arrested. They had a a search warrant that found a murder weapon and bloody clothes. And I say all of this because unfortunately, the trial became not about, did he kill her? It became about, was it murder or was it manslaughter? As we mentioned previously, the trial centered around the couple's private relationship dynamics. And there's only one person in that party that, or in that coupling that can testify to what was going on. You know, there's third parties can say, yeah, I heard them fighting, but, you know, lots of married couples fight. So, you know, Andre cited that his wife had started a business without, without his knowledge, and it sparked an altercation that ended her life. He confessed his attempts to hide the evidence came from a place of panic after he accidentally killed his wife. And they accidentally Worth. stumbled and dismembered her and her body. And burned her body and hid it under a cow. Crazy like, night. Under it. Yeah, it was cow bones. There was like a, a dead cow out in the land that he like hid her body underneath. He really I thought also he was doing something. feel like yeah. you do not get to claim that you're a victim and do this in self-defense if there is a fucking history of domestic disputes and people know that you have been abusive. Like, the, your marriage has been abusive. Yeah, I can't imagine what the family who told her to stay, like, the amount of guilt they have to live with. Oh, and they deserve to live with that guilt, because yeah. that's what her leave, and help facilitate her leave. I mean, even, like, there are, like, multiple police reports um, stating, or, like, that, that there were multiple reports that police had been called to their home to settle domestic disputes. So, like, 
it, there's a paper trail here. It's not even just witness, eyewitness att- like stuff. So during victim impact statements, lots of the family spoke. The daughter did not actually speak during the victim impact statements, but she did. Someone did read a prepared statement from her, which was, "You killed my mother, took away my life, and broke my heart and hurt my feelings, and you will pay for what you did, and you will be punished forever." The hurt my um, feelings part just like gets me the most because I'm yeah, like, that's such a thing a little so kid sad. would say. Well, it's- and. There's lots of crimes, like hate crimes, are like attached to typically other crimes because it's like victimizing people other than the actual victim. Like, there's nothing in his charges about what he has done to his child now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, know, like we, we this is her life. permanent, permanent yeah. trauma. He's she saw her mother be murdered. Like, that's so terrible. So the jury was deadlocked. And after several days, for several days before coming forward with their decision, and the jury found Andre McDonald guilty of manslaughter, but not murder. So, kind of as we mentioned earlier, it is Texas. Texas has very, like, uh, difficult, or I guess easy to prove uh, self defense laws. So, that may have influenced the jury pool of, you know, there's lots of people in that state that have, you know, strong opinions about self defense. And I think it's a, uh, you know, miscarriage of justice for sure. I think the judge also felt that way. Uh, the prosecution advocated for the maximum prison sentence associated with manslaughter, um, and they emphasized his lack of remorse demonstrated um, after he killed Andreen and his attempts to cover up the evidence. And the defense tried to cite that McDonald's had a clean military and criminal record prior to this incident. The judge did end up going with the maximum sentence for manslaughter is 20 years, which does mean he'll be eligible for parole in 10 years. No. The part that makes me very nervous is that, you know, he's been living a clean-cut life or whatever. Does that mean he's going to, like, fit into the structure of prison well enough to, like, decrease his time to get good behavior? And that, is that 10 years a fixed 10 years, or could that be decreased and get out sooner? So the thing we were talking about earlier that you guys asked me to um, expand on, um, I'm just going to quote the article real quick, but essentially um, his father, Everton, which I think his name was, oh, he was called Beachy Stouts. That was his nickname in Jamaica. Beachy. That was a good nickname. He, his first wife was found dead in their home in May 2009. And he is also supposed to stand trial in September of this year for the murder of his second wife. Oh. So. And they just let this man go. So like the whole family just, throw throw that whole bloodline out at this point. Yeah. I can't be around women. How do you do two? Wait, so the first one, did he not get charged for His her? father. His father has yeah. killed two wives. And then, yeah, yeah he has but How killed. did the father... So it's after the first one, did nothing just... Nothing happened? They didn't... I, well, he's being charged with it now. So I don't okay. really... I don't really know exactly how that all works. Oh, no, yeah. He's supposed to... It says here he's supposed to return to court in Jan- January 25th of 2024. So, I yeah, I don't know why it's taken them so long. I mean, that's over 10 years, so... I know we have a lot of feelings about this. So, like, what are your opinions on his sentencing? Of, like, the sentencing of manslaughter instead of first-degree murder? I don't know. I just feel like once you... Like, it's like the whole thing, even though it's kind of the same, a similar outcome, the same thing with, uh, what's-his-face, Robert Durst. I don't think once you try to conceal what you did, once you've dismembered a body, you don't get to say it was self-defense anymore because you're trying to conceal the crime. That shows intent to me. The like, so I think like a, a close crime that like I think is actually manslaughter is like, you know, someone goes out one night to a bar, they get to a drunken bar fight. They punch someone too hard. That person has a brain aneurysm and dies in the hospital. 
Mm -hmm. Like they just got into an altercation, parted ways, and then that person succumbs to their injuries. Or you got into a car accident and someone died. Or and kill someone, yeah. yeah. This it feels like you well, are also, beating the yeah. shit out of somebody who is smaller than you, who you have a history of beating up. That you're admittedly following and continuing an attack on. Yeah. You, yeah, that's the thing that kills me the most, is he it fucking admits that he followed her into the bathroom to continue wailing on her. And also, he put his child to bed, came back, mm-hmm. and then killed her. Mm-hmm. If he thought she was actually dead at that point... Why did he need to bludgeon her with a hammer when he was disposing of the body? Yeah. Maybe she, why, like... Why it, bury her on her... the cow bones? So the point where he actually murdered this person was out in a field with a hammer. Yes, he assaulted her and attacked her earlier, but she wasn't dead at that point. She died from blood force trauma, which we believe to be from the hammer. So at that point, it was premeditated because he brought a weapon out to that field intentionally to make sure she was dead. Yeah, it sounded like he was probably afraid that she would survive and he was going to get in trouble for... Yeah, and at that point, it was a choice. You chose to murder that person. This wasn't, oh, I assaulted her and she accidentally died. Well, I mean, and that's the thing. Even if it's not considered premeditated, it is considered intentional. Right. He knew his actions would lead to her death. I mean, you can't... bury her under cow bones. ...dismember somebody (laughs) and not think that they're fucking... They're going to die. Because, I, I mean, but also, we don't know at which point she did actually die between the, like, fight and the hammer stuff, at, like, later. I don't know. But, like... Yeah, all we have is the, uh, the autopsy report where the medical examiner said she died of butt force trauma. But, again, she could have died. The, yeah, there's so many different right things that he... Yeah. And he did attack her. Yeah, it, it could have been a kick. For all we know, he kicked her in the head. But, that, again, and to me... That's another thing. If someone is laying on the ground and you are kicking them, I feel like at that point, like... They're down. You're done. Like, you... Whatever yeah, fight you want. Yeah, if you're, if you're in the fight, you won the fight. Or quote, unquote. But, like, I feel like... Like, you... You cannot kick someone while they're already on the ground and not expect them to possibly die. Because that's a pretty, like... You know, there's, there's not a lot that they can do back. Like at that point, it, it, this whole thing is already a beating. But if, they, if they're on the ground and you're kicking them while they're down, you're that's a, you're beating someone. <laughs> you're just, well, and you're not clearly fight. not trying to get away. Yeah, mm-hmm. like it's not self-defense anymore. And that's a beating. Yeah. It never was yeah. self-defense. Yeah. So we, we talked about the daughter too. So like, what yeah. impact do you think <laughs> this is going to be on her life? So, part of his defense oh, was like, "Oh, I'm a good guy. I created a trust to take care of my daughter." So they are business owners, or were. It's your job. What happened to their business afterwards? But hopefully, that business can help sustain her. I don't know what kind of families involved if they're taking custody. We don't have any of those details, which is good. I don't think you know this that should be out this here. daughter. She shouldn't be in the news for the rest of her life because of yeah. this. But I just hope that there is enough money that can that that couple generated that can at least get her you know, into adulthood and making, you know, her own life. We don't know the extent of her special needs. I don't know. Uh, I'm surprised to let her, like, uh, sit on the trial and speak, honestly, because she's so young. Well, so she did she actually didn't. come to the trial. She didn't speak on She no. prepared a written statement that was read on her behalf. What's And what's important to recognize, too, that some t- if family is not taking care of her, because if like family is not able to take care of her, a lot of times people with disabilities get placed into homes that are not always the best conditions. And I see that, you know, because Melinda is a teacher who teaches people with disabilities and sometimes students come go to school, but they live at Homes, home or foster like care. group homes with a bunch of different kids as well or a bunch of different people with disabilities and sometimes the conditions are not as good as we would like them to be and sometimes the type of care that they get are not adequate care and mm-hmm. there are cases where these homes that take care of people with disabilities do the bare minimum or don't even care at all if like Let's say they or have no sick. training 
on how to like take care of a kid with like let's say like autism or something like that right well and i've seen time and time again like it's not even just kids with extra obstacles it's and like anybody who goes into the foster mm -hmm. system it, it can be such bad news and like because i've seen in cases too where like these kids who are living with their families are in really bad condition but once they get put into foster care it's fucking worse yeah we're from worse to worse there and going back to their daughter i just hope that wherever she is people are taking care of her because they love her and not because there's a trust that's associated with her name yes. and that's something else that i was thinking about while reading about this i just hope that their daughter is okay and their daughter is not being manipulated in a way that she's getting the bare minimum of what mm -hmm. she deserves as someone that didn't have any consent to being brought into the world right so that actually does raise a, a couple questions on um, so on the trust most likely because of her age she will not be an executor of the trust most likely the executor of the trust would have been the father who set it up yeah. that will be revoked because of his crimes most likely maybe so, it'll be like a lawyer the appointed family. by the court who will okay. say okay you go to this school this home here's the check that like, reminds me of something else what i mean the osage killings yeah oh uh, yeah yeah having a corrupt well, that, person controlling your wealth but even even everything that's come out recently about the murdochs down in uh south carolina oh, yeah. Yeah. same shit similar shit yeah I'm glad it's in a trust and not just in a bank account, because then you know, I'd, I'd, I'd be way more worried about someone just like draining the bank account for the daughter. Mm -hmm. But even still, she's going to obviously have an incredible amount of trauma to be processing. And I hope that she is in a position from family or whoever is taking care of her to actually seek help to do that, you know. But yeah, that was our first frustrating episode back <laughs> I have a feeling we'll have more. Uh oh, yeah, there's way more than a pipeline. I, uh, I'm great at picking out stressful cases to talk about. Hey, future editing Andre, uh, sorry for my mic sounding so low. My dumbass headed farther away from me this time. Note it though, I ring it further. Uh, this disembodied voice just wants to thank you for coming back for a new season. And if you're new, sticking around to the end to check us out. We appreciate it. We love you. We got a lot more coming. So stick around for the music. It's going to be fire. Shake the bussy. You know how it is. And if you're listening to the podcast audio version, check out our YouTube because we have visuals now. And if you're watching on YouTube, check out the podcast. Fuck it. You know, help us out. Anyway, I appreciate you so much. Thank you. This is from the homies. Users want to hang in the cut like an oversized nail. Got a bird's eye view, but still moving like snails. Close to some greatness and still can't.